Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us again to come together to worship in your name. And we ask that something be said in this event to bless all of us today in the word of your name. And we ask the ones who are traveling here and on the highways and we say specifically that they departure. So we ask that you also bless those ones that have prepared the food for us. For us. In his name, in the name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, ladies. How are you? And I'm so excited to be able to meet you very much. Because we just want to have a conversation about what happened after lunch. But we do not have enough of milk control for cows. So I'm so happy to have you. You guys, we are going to get started before you start eating. I'm so sorry. I'm probably going to make 100 enemies right now because I don't know what you like to eat. However, would you mind doing a little bit of your Okay. All right, are we okay? We can? You guys want to get started? All right, we're going to get started. Just a minute. Oh, Chris, you know how I am. I have issues. I'm going to give you the word. We're going to turn it up. And I would like you to sing. I said I was going to ask Miss Evelyn to sing with me. She was like, oh, come down. I'd like to probably not the church choir and make me look bad, huh? <laughs> Now, 
be here in Sunny Bay. I absolutely love you. Thank you so much for having us. Putting on an absolutely spectacular event. You are here to paint what? The world. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys. How many of you are in business? How many of you are in sales? Can I raise your hand again? How many of you are in sales? Now, okay, those of you that are not in sales, raise your hand. Do you have kids? Do you have a husband? You are better than you know. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you gotta go home tonight. Okay, now, you guys, I really appreciate our time today. We're here to talk about how the world has changed. You guys feel like it's changed just a little bit? How many of your kids? 13 or under. Yes, the grandkids, nieces, nephews, 13 or under. What about 13, 18? Is there a difference? <laughs> yes? I know you ordered from Starbucks with an 18 year old. They're like, <laughs> So have you handed a uh, toddler an iPhone right lately? Anyone? Yes? What does your toddler do with the iPhone? They what? Better than who? Yes. Most of our kids think we're slightly slow right now. This is the challenge. How many of you plan on being in business five years from now? Ten years from now. I'm going to introduce my son. Um, uh, we said earlier my son is a, a wonderful young team. He wasn't this morning. So my son is Terrell, and uh, I love him, but my son this morning, he decides to tell me, he walks in my room, and he says, Mom, I'm late. So I'm okay. So am I. What do you need? He said, well, I texted you last night. I said I got detention. I was like, for what? He said, Twitter and during class. And you texted me last night to tell me you got in trouble and detention for Twitter last night. Are you crazy? Now I'm in trouble. So I'm late. My son had issues. Last year, I was in the British Virgin Islands, and my son's birthday is on November 13th. Anybody been to British Virgin Islands? It is beautiful, but it costs $20 a second to send a text message or a message on Facebook. It's his birthday, I'm all right with that. So I decided to take a picture. I waited until the water washed up on the sand, and the sand was absolutely beautiful, and I took a stick and I drew in the sand, and I said, happy birthday, baby, and I put a little heart, and I said, I love you, mama, and I took a coconut, and I set it next to it, and took a picture, and I uploaded it to Facebook. I felt a little guilty I was coming home the day after his birthday. Not real guilty, it's a little. And as soon as I got into Facebook, I noticed my son had decided to create an event for his birthday. He had 135 RSVP. At main event, $13 a head. And I was paying. You ever try to grab a child for the phone from another place? You can. You can. You can. You can. I can. If you have a device, let me know. I need help. We are in an entirely new world where our kids are five years away from being what? What are they going to be to us? It's like, still my baby. No, I'm just like, <laughs> doesn't matter, 10 years, five years, it's all the same. This is the deal. We are five years away from having a new generation of consumers, and more importantly, competitors. And I don't know about you, but I'm scared to death to compete with my child. I am absolutely nervous to compete with my child. My child has more people in his network and can reach them faster than 90% of this room. You know what I mean? And he doesn't have to pick a phone. Hire him. Well, now we have a different issue. I know you're trying to control him at home. So, we have a really interesting era that we have to face over the next five years. Everything surrounds around the most important thing in life and sales and business, which is what? Anyone want to take a guess? What is most important? How do we I, well, what matters more than anything? Relationships. And relationships stem from what, ladies? What do we want our men to do? Work. Work. I call them men down. What is it? Work, dang it. Okay, what do we want them to do? Say it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Communicate. Please. Everything stems around communication. However, we have a whole new generation of kids that are coming up that don't communicate the same way. They don't use the same devices. They don't do we think that all it is is technology. Whether it's Twitter or Facebook or Dig or Doug or StumbleUpon or Tetranati or YouTube, I can keep going, or LinkedIn or Tag. How many social media sites do you think exist? Thousands. Thousands. How many of 
many of you carry an iPhone? Raise your hands. How many of you carry a Blackberry? Raise your hands. Usually it's all my done my ties. How many of you carry an Android? Oh, Android rules in this room. I like that. Me too. All right. How many of you would rather watch a video than read an article? Raise your hand and look around. How many of you use video on a regular basis to market or communicate your business? This is an interesting thing. We have to be very, very careful about how we choose to communicate. But more importantly, we have to figure out how to meet people where they are. How many of you have found it difficult to change yourself? Raise your hand. Is it difficult to change? Let me ask you this. How many of you on a treadmill? How many of you are folding your laundry right now? Yes? So we're drying our clothes with this. We've got to figure out how to change. And we've got to figure out how to change rapidly in order to be able to do business in a new world. In order to communicate with the new generation. Do you think you're going to change their habits? This is so critical because right here in this room, my son's livelihood depends on yours, as does yours depend on him. We have got to meet in a common ground. We have to meet in a central area where we are leveraging technology in order to meet them in a new place, in a new environment, a new technology, so that we can have communication. I had a, a good friend of mine, she said she was on an airplane, and uh, she sat down next to this gentleman. She was sitting in first class, and she said, as soon as she sat down, um, Kylie got over the, the shortest spot on the airline, and she said, well, we're going to be late. So she picked up her phone, and she said she was going to send him a text message for her, for her husband. And she said, babe, I'm going to be late. The plane is delayed. The gentleman sitting next to her had an attitude from the second he got on the plane. She knew it. He looked over at him, and she was like, why, can, why couldn't you call? Why did you send a text? So she looked over, and mind you, she's around 65. She looked over, and she was like, well, you don't text? She's like, no. Oh, why don't I text? She said, well, do you have any kids? Yeah. Do you have any grandkids? All of a sudden, the whole demeanor thing. He was like, yes, I have a grandson. His name is Chad. That's what he's talking. All of a sudden, he's happy and he's excited. He's like, well, when was the last time you talked to Chad? Oh, no, you don't understand. I love that word. Afraid. You don't understand. Chad is in college, doesn't have time for me. We don't talk. He's like, well, do you have Chad's number? Yes. Can I borrow your phone? Okay. So she grabs his phone, she sends a quick message to, you know, one of eight contacts. Says, I is mom, dad, dad. Sends a quick message to him, and she says, Chad, this is Graham. Hope you're doing well. Bye. Two seconds later, the phone went, maybe, you're like, what is that? Probably Chad. As soon as she picks up the phone, she reads off the chat and Chad says, Dude, Graham, I didn't know you text. So cool. Love you. <laughs> Instantaneously, he looks over and he says, I have a daughter I haven't talked to in 20 years. Do you think it would work with her? Out. Now, I've told that story. Actually, American Airlines, I spoke for the Women in Aviation Conference, and I told that story. It was really interesting because I was watching the back of the room, and there was a group sitting in the back of the room. And I saw two women with their cell phones after that story literally pull them out, and I saw them deep in concentration. After the event, they came up to me afterwards, and they're like, I disconnected with my kids, so I haven't talked to them for years. Because of that one story. That is a really big deal. Right now, it kills me when I see social media speakers come up and they talk to business professionals and they start talking about Facebook versus Twitter and what you should use and what you should use. And then they start talking about demographics and that only kids are on Facebook. Guess who must be on Facebook if you have kids? You watch them at home? You want them at home? Guess where they're doing all of their, guess where they have all their communication, their parties, their hangouts, their discussions, their influences? Where does it occur? It's on Facebook. If we don't participate as parents in our children's lives, are they in trouble? Absolutely. And now their lives operate in a different place. Now their communication, their friends, everything that they do, it happens in a different space. I was at my son, he's at a choir concert, and uh, as soon as we got there, we took a bunch of pictures, and I was telling the kids, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upload these to Facebook when I get done, so you can't them there. And I had a mom come up, and she was like, my son's not on Facebook. I was like, hmm. Really? Huh. And I'm thinking for a second. She's like, no, we're not. Oh, we don't use Facebook in my house. We're not allowed. Like, wow. What's his middle name? She's like, Alan. I'm like, oh, he's on Facebook. 
One round. <laughs> Messaging. 
I just asked an entire room if you've made a purchase in 12 months. We had five purchases. Raise your hand. Five. Not five times five people. Five. Is that a problem? So let me ask you this. In the last 12 months, how many of you have done business with somebody because of referral? Raise your hand. Got a referral to a, a, an individual product or service, something. Raise your hand and look around. How many of you Google them first? Keep your hands up if that's you. How many of you Google them first? Find where you found negative information you didn't place at all. Keep your hands up. So let me, we're going to go through one more thing. How many of you have done business because of something you researched on the internet? Raise your hand and look around. This is an oxymoron to me. We go to school, we learn marketing and advertising, they teach us things of ways to market our business. Or when I ask consumers, I would rather ask people from soccer moms how they buy all day long than someone who's born and raised in the advertising business. Is that important? Your opinion drives everything that I do. Your real opinion. How you buy, how you research, how you shop. I've had people that argue with me and they said, you know what? I know how people buy. I do all my business via referral. I don't need the internet. I will tell you I'm able to ask audience after audience after audience. How many of you buy via referral? Everyone raise their hands. How many of you Google them first? And 80% of the room keep their hand up. How many of you did place a call because you couldn't find that there was negative information and 60% of that, that group keep their hand up? In this room, we just told each other how people buy. Two ways. One because of referral, two because of the internet. You can't do business via referral without validation from the internet. Where should I spend my time? Where should I spend my time? And I'm not saying you can talk about products or services, I'm also talking about you. Right? You are going to have to market yourself at some point. Whether you're representing a company, you're representing yourself. Your personal brand matters. How you personally position online matters. I see a lot of people going to corporate America and they don't take care of their personal brand. They don't take care of themselves. So when stuff is corporate safe, I'm sorry, we own a corporation or work in HR. Don't be mad at me. Is corporation safe? Is it secure? If you work for a corporation right now, is it secure? Who do you need to take care of? You must make sure that you protect your personal brand. You are a physical asset. Where your position? Your children's name and brand is, is a physical asset. How many of you own your own domain name? First name, last name. Anyone? Fantastic. How many of you own your kids' domain names? How many of you believe your children could become the president of the United States? <laughs> By their domain name. <laughs> Think about it like that. Right? Think about it like that. By their domain name. After every single social media site, there's what's called a handle. Twitter.com forward slash Jennifer Bagley. Facebook.com forward slash Jennifer Bagley. There's no difference in domain names now. What if someone takes yours? More important now, your children. And you wouldn't want it to be something bad. I was standing on stage, I spoke for the um, University of North Texas um, Technology Conference, I was in Kino. They have a stage like this, there's three of them. Three screens like this, back to back to back. I was so proud, slightly arrogant, that I owned the first 35 pages of the book my own name. You put my name in there, 35 pages, I'm like, they're back, they're back. I'm like, I'm like, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, they I got three websites. I was so excited. It was a room like this, and it was stretched back like four rows deeper than this. And I like put my name in. Hit me. Hit search. The second they hit search, I looked back. There was a woman on there with a mugshot. <laughs> <laughs> there was five of them. And they said Houston crime scene investigation. <laughs> Jennifer Baggins, convicted felon. I'm looking in the back. Hit this. So I'm standing there, I'm looking at this screen, and I see my name, and I see this woman all over it. This is what happened. I had got married a few years before that, and I had a woman tell me, the Zach as a woman, she said, Jennifer, you gotta work on your, or your married name, not your baby's name anymore. So I stopped working. I'm owning real estate online for my name, my maiden name, and I started working on my married name. So then I was like, okay, well, let me go look and see what's going on with my married name. So I went in and I put Jennifer Buckles in there. You obviously see why I didn't buy the name thing? I I should have known that. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> So we went in and pulled it up. Next thing I know, there was a swimsuit model on there, hardly wearing anything. And Jennifer Buckles, two days earlier, prior to the conference, 
we won a competition. So now I have three screens. One of them has crime scene investigation everywhere, and the next one has a naked woman all over it, everywhere, full screen covered, video, pictures, everything. <laughs> He's on his phone. <laughs> it won't know, because it is a heck of a lot harder to play defense than it is offense. If you don't start right now, I will tell you, because I took a break on that, I got sidetracked, I started working on other things, other businesses, and I stopped working on my own personal brand. Now the fight cost me more time, more money, and so forth. If Miss Linda wanted to have me come speak, do you think she Googled me first? I think she did. If you do business with somebody, it's very, very, very important that you own your, your own brand. I was talking about corporate, don't mind my ADD. Sometimes I'll get track, but I'll always come back at some point. So I was talking about corporate not being secure. I've seen individuals work in a corporation get off because of some, some something happens, and they get off that superhighway and instantly slow down to nothing. Because while they were in corporate America, they didn't take care of their brand. They didn't take care of their network. How many of you have friends you wish you would stay in contact with in business and life that would be very valuable after right now and you please do it? Raise your hand. We can't do it anymore. We can't. I love Facebook because it is like this, this, this timeline. You know what I mean? I think about my life pre-Facebook. It's kind of, you know, before Facebook. Yeah. So, <laughs> before Facebook, I was a, a single mom and I traveled around the world. I had a... Um, more contacts and individuals that were major role players and influencers in my life, and I can't find them. I didn't capture those moments. Right now, you have the ability to document your life, your connections, your network, to keep them close to you, and to leverage the most powerful asset ever with other people. If I was to tell you all about myself and how great I am, or Linda was to tell me all about myself and how great I am, who are you going to trust? Your networking, everything. How you position yourself, your company, your brand online means everything. Everything. How many of you have heard of search engine optimization? So I'm a, I'm a technical nerd. I just try and disguise it with clothes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let me explain how Google works real quick because I want to leave you with this. I mean, actually, how many of you have seen um, Bruce Almighty? Okay, you remember when it, he was in the warehouse and God says, everything you've ever thought, everything you've done, everything you've seen, everything you've said, is in this file drawer. That is Google. Google is a file and system of pieces of paper. That's all it is. The more pieces of paper you have inside that drawer, the more real estate you own. Now let me explain the power of a network. Google cares about three things. Okay, one is are you relevant? How are things labeled? So having your name online critical. That's the labeling. Two is, are you current? If you're not on and talking and communicating, then you're not current online. And the third is, do other people trust you? Welcome to social media. Everybody takes two seconds to point at me just like this. Point right at me just like this. Those are called bad things. Social media sites pointing to my name or my website can say thumbs up. Have you seen those little plus one, Google plus, retweet, Facebook share, and so forth? Those are testimonials in today's environment. Those are critical on your website. They're critical to be part of your blog. Blogs are critical. Which one do you think outperforms each other, website or blog? Blog, because it's what? It is getting current. Absolutely. So if you're in corporate America and something happens, do you think it's important to have positioning online? Think about it this way. If I have two employees, and I'm bringing one of the, actually, you know what I'm telling you real quick? I have two media people. They both came in, they're both reporters. One of them was 26 years old. He had a network of close to a quarter million people that followed him on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and his blog. Another one, she's absolutely amazing. She worked for King Five in Seattle, Washington. Both of them, unfortunately, weren't looking for employment. She didn't believe in the digital space, she believed in television, advertising, true media. Guess who got hired? The younger one with less experience. Guess how much money they made? More than she did when she got hired. Four times. The power of your network is critical. You have to think about yourself and your network as a brand and a powerhouse. You've got to take care of yourself like a mass truck. It is very, very important. I mean, the, the internet, it scares you. 
A little bit nervous? Hey, how many of you think you can't do any of this because you don't have enough what? What do you think the number one excuse is for sales professional partners, business owners, individuals? What's your number one excuse that prevents you from doing what you already know you should do? I don't have enough time. If you're in sales, how many of you answer the same question every single day? Raise your hand. Okay, this is an oxymoron. If I answer the same question every single day over and over and over and over again, and I don't think it's like that, a lot of people answer that question without me being there. Why don't I have enough time? Because I chose not to. Because I chose not to. You must digitize yourself. I have two ways I can take this event. One, I can come and just speak, which I would. And I can spend an hour with you. How long is that going to last? An hour, right? And maybe some follow-up. What happens if I digitize this moment by having a video back there? We're recording on a live broadcast. Wave if you're in any of these rooms. If you are online right now and there's people watching you live on Google right now. So, okay. What happens if I Really good question and like an eight day class. <laughs> 
that's actually one, a quite a great question. Two, that's about ten different blog posts. And three, I would love to interview online because we have that question answered digitally. Um, I'll offer you to set up an appointment with this lady right here. Let's get on a Google Hangout. I would like to find a handful of parents who have kids that are 13, 14, or 15 years old, and I'd love to have that conversation online. I can't answer it here. <laughs> my first answer after this morning is no, I'm totally joking. Um, and we need to connect because you are at perfect age and you're going to get playing well. Yes. I have a 12 year old son, and I'm going to be able to tell you that I have a guitar. So, can you teach me how to do it? Well, you're going to be like, at least one day you'll be back to the rules on technology so that you won't be socially retarded. And because I'm sure you're going to be to our people or the people that say, can I just leave my email and not call them? Mm -hmm. That's a good thing to do to tell what I want you to talk to your friend on the phone because he has a phone number. Mm -hmm. Not just I believe that if you need to give her a hand, because that is so critical right now. Do you see me? Um, Casey and I have a program called Fusion Marketing that says if you're an old school principal, then you hate technology. In my house at dinner, there's no technology. Ever. I will not allow a cell phone at the dinner table. My friends hate me because when we go out, I'm like, put your phone away. And I'll take them. Kathy, how many times am I taking your phone away at the table? My son is to the point where she can't give me a computer. Give me a computer. My mom's going to take it away. Absolutely take it away at the dinner table. Take it away one day a week. Every Sunday, we have a no technology day, and we just spend our time with the couple of people we don't need A hundred percent. I will tell you, in a digital environment, I heard Casey speak the other day, and he was talking about the infinity circle. Bringing people offline, bringing them online. Bringing them offline, bringing them online. That is how business is done. I started with communication. I started with relationships. We'll end with that. Because that is more important than anything is the ability to be friends, love, love, trust, communicate, and talk to each other. The digital space just lets you, it broadens your opportunity to have more opportunities to meet people to bring them offline. Don't stay in the digital space. Bring them to the street. Bring them down. Yes. I think we have to wrap up this one. Please. I know a lot of people that do work in corporate America and also have a side business, and so they don't want their business, their corporate America job to know about what they're doing on the side. How do you handle that when you want to have a social presence and cannot? <laughs> that's, that, that's another class as well, and that's a long workshop. I made that transition. I made that transition out of corporate America. I moonlighted for about a year and a half while I was in corporate America, and I got my hands up a couple times. Oops. <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you what. If everything stems down to three different things. Um, clarity, focus, and execution. You have to be clear on what you want and how you're going to get there. Everything's on a timeline. Without the use of technology, without the use of strategy, it's not going to work. Three things matter. Technology, strategy, and behavior. you got to have the right habits. It's going to be very, very difficult to grow business under a rock. So you have a few different things. I don't know who's in your network or if you have team members or partners. There's ways to create third-party agencies to be able to do that. It's not the same. Um, that's a long conversation. So I wish I had a quick answer for you, but I'd love to do that. Okay? You guys, um, I have a survey here. And I take your opinion so highly. So please, be as honest as you can. And uh, provide us with some feedback. There, um, one, there's some rating things on here. You can give me some insights. Let me talk slower. Normally, um, Linda, can I have one and a half minutes? Yeah. One minute? One. Thank you guys, um, really quick, flip this paper over very fast. Draw a line right down the middle like this, and a line right across the center like this. I need to know this room really quick. At the very top in the center, write the word dominant. No, actually, I'm sorry, write the word formal. Write the word formal. Very top in the center, right here, write the word formal. So you should have a line here and a line here. Right up here, write the word formal. At the very bottom, write the word informal. Left hand side center, write the word dominant. And right hand side center, write the words slow with, like go with slow. Slow. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, All right, if you find yourself to be more formal, circle formal, informal, circle informal. 
So formals at the very top, informals at the very bottom. Determine which one you find yourself more likely. This will come out of the way you dress, this will come out of the way you communicate, where you like to run an office, the way you like to run your house, the way you throw a party. More formal or informal? All right, on the left hand side, if you find yourself to be more dominant, circle dominant. If you find yourself to be more, go with the flow, easy going, circle flow in. And you may not put in the middle, that's called multiple personality disorder. <laughs> Welcome to women. <laughs> not circle the middle. <laughs> All right, how many of you chose dominant and formal? Dominant and formal. You guys right in there for controllers. <laughs> Controlling controllers. I am going to do that. Okay, on the right hand side, formal and fluid. Circle those. Who can pick formal and fluid? All right, right now the word compliance slash analyst. You too? Okay. Uh, dominant. And informal. Raise your hands. Always a speaker. I could have told you. These are promoters and influencers. All right, and the last one, but most important, informal and fluid. Raise your hands. You must have friends like these. These are supporters. Write those down. Supporters. So if you find yourself on the right hand side, if you were in the compliant, analytical, or supporter side, most likely you're going to write off your uh, survey on the other side that I need to slow down. And then I talked to the past. If you already wrote that. If you find yourself on the right hand side, you're more dominant and a promoter or an influencer, probably love it. Okay? Everything that we do depends on personality styles. If we make our decisions based on who we are, what we like, how we operate, what we know, guess who you're alienating? 75% of the room. Or 75% of your market. Hey, you guys, fill these out. If you guys need help, or there's something that we talked about today and you want to know how it relates to your business, check 911. I have five speaking engagements this week, and this is how we prioritize. If you just need assistance and you're not sure with what, check 411. It won't happen right away, but we will make time to make sure that we have a consultation with you and just visit. If there's specific areas at the bottom that you're interested in getting more information on, I know that the chamber would love to find out what kind of speakers they should bring in for you. Please fill out those areas that you're most interested in getting more information on. We'll be happy to send you over some videos. We have August, we have tons of educational videos, and um, we'd love to be able to help any way that we can. With that being said, you guys, make tons of money, attract people to you, and enjoy the rest of your wonderful day.